Hello, all you Brodies and Pegasus sisters. Welcome to the NBS show. I'm your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill, and I've taken control for this episode. <laughs> for today, we are talking about my favorite character and her not so favorite brother. Joining me today is podcaster and planeswalker extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Hey guys, I'm lazy, so I decide to put all my work onto another person. Uh, it's the Silver American just way. Took over. I took over by accepting his burden. Yes. I'm a benevolent kind of user. <laughs> Works for me. And joining us as well as our co-host and star and mascot, Sapphire Heart Song Rogers. I hate you. I am not friggin' Captain America for f- Did you read the previous comments on, um... Yes. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> Keep doing it. I'll get you, Silver Quill, and your little dog, too! When Sapphire throws her mighty shield, all Silver Quills must yield. Mm. Let's just get on with the dang review. Alrighty, well, basically we are talking about Flutter Brutter. It's the 11th episode of Season 6, which is overall episode 128. Did you ever imagine we get this high up in the numbers? No, never. Nope. Tis a thing of beauty. Beauty, I tell you. Speaking of beauty, we get to see Fluttershy in all her fluttery glory. And we're introduced to her little bro, who's taller, Zephyr Breeze. And basically, Zephyr's having a little trouble launching into life, putting a great deal of burden on her parents. Oh, that's right. Fluttershy has parents, too. Yeah. (laughs) Who knew? And they're not abusive, like all the other fanfics out there. And I thought that... Pegasi were kind of adopted, you know, like one of those things where they, I, I, what was that, like the Romans did? Like, I don't know, that history thingy. Pegasi are jerks and are the biggest softies in the world. Yeah, we seem to go by extremes, don't we? There's never just a average Joe Pegasus 9 to 5 jobber. What about Sorin? Well, huh? he's a different kind of jobber. <laughs> <laughs> All oh right. My. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I'm thinking he's just there to lose. But what you're thinking? Yeah. What were you thinking, Safi? You don't want to know what goes on in my. That's not a word. Brain. You can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. So consider yourself synopsied. Consider yourself warned. Consider yourself open to spoilers. But we're diving in and we're launching this big. But first, initial impressions. Miss Rogers, your thoughts. Oh, God. This, this episode still scares me to this day over the coincidental situation of the family and my family. Fluttershy is the gender-bent version of my older brother. Except, well, I haven't had a, you know, go live with him because my parents kicked me out or whatever, but... My older brother is an animal caretaker, or, well, he's a massage therapist, but he's also got one cat, two parakeets, four dogs, and two full-grown horses to take care of. And a partridge in a pear tree. The sad part is he would probably have that too, but yeah, he's an animal caretaker, and I am currently in college trying to major in a more creative standpoint. Sure, I'm not a beautician like Zephyr Breeze is, but you can see how this episode would scare me. I am also jobless. So, yeah, it scares me. Because Zephyr Breeze is what I could be. Because I'm a free spirit, I'm the lazy one in my family, and that could be me. Zephyr Breeze is what could be me. Uh, have you ever said siesta? Siesta. Oh, I did oh, now. That. Okay, Norman, take over. Before I put a bun in my hair, I don't know. Well, as for me, I kind of like this episode for multiple reasons. Because reason one is we get to see Fluttershy's parents. We get to see Fluttershy's family members. Like, who knew? And... We get to know that Fluttershy's parents are kind of soft-spoken like she is. So this can carry over and I can see why. But the whole flight camp thing still confused me. Other than that, we get to see ponies getting annoyed. So that's fun. 
Oh, yes. Great is the annoyance. Not quite as great as when I come to town, but, you know. And for myself, well, what can I say? I love this episode. I think it might be one of my, it's one of my favorites uh, of the season thus far. Mostly because, yes, Fluttershy is my fave. My, my favorite pony, the one I cheer for more than any other. And to see, finally have an episode where it's not about her being afraid, but her putting that assertiveness she learned into better use. What greater event is there to witness? It's just getting to see her be her best self. Now, a lot of this is also dependent on how much you like Zephyr Breeze. The, he, the episode puts a lot of energy into making sure you don't like him initially. Mm-hmm. And unlike Fluttershy, we, we don't see the spark that says this guy has a future. That is, uh, well, that, that's something we have to sort of take on faith. We have to trust the character. Kind of like how Twilight told us that Cadence and Shining Armor were the best things since Let's Bread. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm not going to lie, that did not go well for me. Yeah, but Zephyr is a one-off character, so he's going to do well. Oh, one-off? Oh, sir. We shall talk about this at the end of the review. Harump! <laughs> but we have dilly dally chilly shelly enough. You ha- consider yourselves all warned. We're diving into this episode. And we begin with a news building in Cloudsdale. I get the sense that Fluttershy's family is rather modest income because actually they may not make as much as Rainbow Dash. They've got exactly a two bedroom home with a little lawn. Rainbow Dash has a multi tiered castle, it looks like. But. She lives in Ponyville, so probably Sky Property is different. I, I don't know. When we're talking about Pony Finance, that's just strange. Actually, it turns out Fifth Rich has an investment strategy that uh, beats the normal portfolio, keeps the market on its toes, and I have no idea what I'm talking about, but if I do it in this voice, it sounds authoritative. Ha-ha! Business, business, business. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Is it working? I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've, well, you gotta make 70 pitches to make one sale. <laughs> but still, we see two other ponies, so that's cool. We see Fluttershy's mommy and daddy! Mr. and Mrs. Shy! Yay! Who are, who are the complete opposite of my parents? That's the only main difference in this episode? Oh my god. Yes, they, uh, th- this, this floors me. Later on, they say, uh, we're not as adventurous as you. I thought, how did you leave the house? <laughs> if you think about it on the grand scale, Fluttershy's parents are kind of uh, passive. They don't go out too much. I'm guessing the only furthest they went is probably different parts of Cloudale. Yet, Fluttershy has been on her own to a wildlife resort or wildlife location where she get to meet the breezies. So that's kind of adventurous compared to them. But honestly, if you're friends with Discord, anything's adventurous. Very true. Yeah. And of course, and we Very can see much. that somehow, somehow, I've always been a little unsure of what sparked this friendship. Rainbow Dash knows them very well and is just there to hang out saying that having nearly been killed in several Wonderbolts exhibits, exhibitions, uh, it's really nice to just sit back and try to repress the trauma. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. I think she was just relaxing. <laughs> oh, sure. That's what she says, but her eyes, her eyes <laughs> scream. <laughs> uh. I'm pretty sure the traumatic experience would come from Zephyr Breeze, but... Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, because her Fluttershy's parents gently nudge the conversation towards her brother, and we get to see something I don't normally see. Flutter frustrated. <laughs> frustrated shy. <laughs> That's rare. Like, yeah, I, I don't see that much. The only time she was frustrated I can remember was um the Halloween episode, the Iron Will episode, and this one. Is there any more? Hmm. No. Fluttershy is too, too meek to be frustrated, unless it's this case. I don't know. That's, good. That's my bad that good. Fluttershy impression. Are you kidding? That was a fantastic little squeak. It was barely audible. It's just like episode one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, 
well, there you have it. I can somehow do Fluttershy. Yay. And as okay. if on cue, on. the Flutter Brother hits the scene yeah. in all his millennial glory. <laughs> millennial. Yes, it's home! All right. So I want to hear this. Sefi, your first impression upon scene, set Zephyr Breeze. As soon as I saw him, I'm not going to like you, am I? That was it. And then commercial break. <laughs> yes. Um, as for me, uh, I, I think the fan ruined this for me because there were multiple comics or multiple hit canon ideas of how they wanted to introduce Zephyr or Fluttershy's brother. And one of the most popular ones out there was either he's the total opposite of Fluttershy or exactly the same but worse. I, I like the head canon that, um, <laughs> There was this one comic, I don't know the artist's name or what the comic is called, but I remember somebody doing a comic dub of it. It was basically, oh guys, my brother Shine, he's very sensitive to his like one wing, like finding Nemo or whatever. And like, it's the main six, they're all already laughing, it's like, oh god, that's going to be just as dorky as Flare Shy is, and then he comes out like full masculine, full macho mode, and is like somewhat cute and shy. I like that headcan the most. I'm sorry I'm late, I was fighting a shark. Oh hi everybody, didn't see you there. That's the comic that I saw too, so yeah, uh, headcanon kind of there. But now, we, <laughs> once the parents already mentioned that, oh, Zepper's coming, oh, uh, this is, we're not gonna enjoy him, are we? All right, let's see how he. Oh god, he's this kind of character. Yes, writers, you did a good job. What? What do you mean, this kind of character? One of those that were meant to hate. Oh, okay then. I honestly kind of liked him, like later down the line. But first, it's like I don't like you, huh? Well, when Zephyr hits the scene, voiced by Ryan Beal. Ooh, I, unfortunately, I don't know Ryan Beale's uh, career as intimately as others might. Apparently, let us just let's just see. I don't Google, know. save me. An actor yeah, voiced in a of places, Vancouver. To put it shortly, he does exactly what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to be prideful. He's supposed to be boisterous. He comes in and just starts trying to impose himself as the center of attention. And oh, he does it, but not in the way he probably expected. And it hits hard. He starts hitting on Rainbow Dash. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes. All, all. <laughs> this, I love this scene. Just because of how <laughs> boisterous and egotistical Rainbow can be. Now meet your match. <laughs> oh, meet, meet your surpasser, it seems. Yes. And she's rendered speechless by it. She's so speechless. Well, yeah, it's not every day that a guy hits on Rainbow Dash of all people. And, yeah, I don't think she's into it. Ugh. Yeah, and not from Zephyr. I'm still looking up uh, Ryan Beale. I believe it's Beale, but I'm probably wrong about that. Apparently, he is very renowned for an improv comedy troupe called The Sunday Service. He's been Never he's had the of careers it. of actor of note on stage and screen. Let's see here. He also co-founded the comedy school Blind Tiger and uh, curates a, a live venue called Little Mountain Gallery. Not really sure what that is, but basically he is, I think he's more well-known in Vancouver than he is here in the States. But now he is known as a breeze. He's also known as a freeloader. And many people will draw parallels to millennials. It's, but don't, don't anyone show this episode to Bill Maher. Who? Uh, Sappy. <laughs> Sapphire Heart Song. How do you not know Bill Maher? I've heard of Bill Murray. Totally different. No. <laughs> no, Norman. seriously. Who's Bill Maher? Norman. Back, back me up. Tell me, tell me you've heard of this. Different country, so, uh, how do you spell the word Mar? M-A-R? I believe it's M-A-H-R. M-A-H-R. But I'm, I'm too busy wishing I could throttle all the youngins. 
I'm right. sorry, I am a uh, blah, millennial, so yeah. I know you're all millennials. You want to know why? I was the very last Gen Xer. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was born in December. The last. I was born in 1997. I don't want to hear it. You shut up with your face. <laughs> Honestly, um, I got no idea who Bill Maher is. It's one of those different country kind of deal. All right. Bill Maher is a political talk show host, politically incorrect with Bill Maher. He brings a lot of humor and insight, uh, oh, and I also some very, that guy before. and I some very hardcore, up. good for you. And some very hardcore opinions, especially about millennials. So you, you can actually YouTube a search, uh, on his discussion of millennials and the entitlement they enjoy. Uh, in the wake of Bernie Sanders' political run, a lot of people were attracted to it. And Bill Maher has admitted that perhaps we, we've overstressed capitalism, but then he cautioned against what is basically too much socialism. He says to young people, I know you're used to getting stuff for free with uh, Napster and Torrance, and the idea of actually paying for something is almost a foreign concept now. He's trying to lay down the law, but then he uh, he got a wave of backlash from the younger people who stressed, you know, it's not we're lazy, it's that your generation gave us an econ- economic nightmare. They tried to enter the That's workforce. Just a bit true. Well, yeah, they tried to enter the workforce when after bubbles burst, while we were in a recession, while unfortunately employment is considered a commodity. You know, uh, big businesses can afford to swap people out like cogs. Basically, there's that tension in our culture about y- younger generations. Are they lazy? Are they entitled? Are we just not giving them a chance to shine? Have they grown up enough? Zephyr is sort of at the center or representation of this vortex. Honestly, I don't agree with that statement there. If we're talking about the uh, millennials versus the Gen Xers, yes, that I can see an argument there. But with Zephyr here, nah, I don't see that. Because with Zephyr, he's not even trying. He's giving up. That's the argument a lot of Gen Xers make about millennials, that they're not trying, that they're so entitled or possess undeserved confidence uh, that they give up on the, at, when things get tough. Immediately. Well, for Zephyr here, he just gives up like a week, <laughs> like just in for a week and then just gives up. I do, I can see the parallel with some people, but honestly, those people are just give uppers. Like if a real person who really wants a job and gets a job, they work hard at it. They try for at least three months. That's the probation period for any workplace, if I understand right. Three months, you're an optimist, my boy. Well, that's, that's one of the provisions period, right? When you're working before you get like all the benefits of work? Or is that my uh, country? Uh, I think that's more your country. We sometimes have a, a trial period, but it, it can be a struggle just to get your foot in the door. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, we'll come back to the topic of Zephyr not trying because that's a key part of this episode. But at the moment, mostly I'm just watching Rainbow Dash shove him off a, off a chair. Yep. Him not paying attention at all. And before that, we have the conversation with Fluttershy and parents. As she tries to coach them to stand up for themselves. And they say, we know how to do that. And Fluttershy just gives this, are you kidding me look. When the shyest of ponies in Ponyville gives you an are you kidding me look, there's reason you to worry. You know something's wrong. Abandon ship. Abort. Abort! There's something wrong there. That is true. Although I'm not sure how much this is relevant, but let's talk just for a minute about Rainbow and having a guy uh, make advances or make his attraction known. A while back, Amy Keaton Rogers showed a, a scrapped script for a scene where it turned out there was Rainbow had an admirer in Ponyville, whom she seemed to despise. And when fans read the script, they were instantly sympathetic to uh, the guy, the pony who was trying to win her over because she was basically just saying, will you stop it? And he was just sulking off in tears. This, everyone seems to sympathize with Rainbow because Zephyr will not uh, take a hint. And it's, I find it funny how the 
uh, how the sympathy or empathy goes one way or another, depending on how each party behaves. That's true. That's what I mentioned before when I said that the writers did a good job in portraying Zephyr here because we started off disliking him because the script says so. And to convey that here is an awesome job. And with Amy's part there, I, I got no idea how the whole story is supposed to go with the whole lesson. Probably it's supposed to end up with Rainbow Dash feeling guilty and being a big fat jerk. So maybe probably that. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't end at all. It's, it's just a one-off gag. Oh, no. Then, then, yeah, but still, um, I'm glad they cancel it out because it will make Rainbow's character really jerky. So no. Oh no. We had, we had, uh, 28 pranks later for that. Oh yeah. But that has a big lesson at the end. With this one with a one-off joke, no lesson. So no. Well, moving on. So basically, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash make their way back to Ponyville and Fluttershy, oh, oh, what are, what is happening to young people these days? You have to wash your mouth out with soap. Yeah. Peeved. Of all things. My god, Peeved. do I need to put Sweetie Bot here? Silver, watch your mouth. I am peeved that peeved is considered a bad word, so I am so peeved. Peeved, peeved, peeved. Are you triggered yet? To be honest, I think in this show, Fluttershy is the only one to kind of curse. Think about it. Remember the I episode? <laughs> oh, fly feather. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I believe I was yelling at Josh Scorcher at Silver's panel at one point when he was saying peeved or whatever. I know I was yelling at Josh for something. Oh, for we saying all peeved. We all yell at Josh at some point. <laughs> yeah. But this is why Fluttershy is the... That was supposed to be a fart joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. These things are poorly labeled. <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it is a funny recurring gag. As is Pinky's insecurity as she's just completely ignored. With that, you get to see Pinky being, oh no, what's going on? What did I do wrong? I must find the answer. Applejack to the rescue. Oh yes, Applejack. Getting to have a little laugh. Now, this is funny that Fluttershy has the weirdest sibling relationship, but also in some ways the most natural. They get on one another's nerves. Mm -hmm. They they push one another. They want to love, but they also want to just sometimes push. Kill each other. Well, or at least in Fluttershy's case, uh, kill her younger brother. Mm. Sounds like me with my brother, who is like eight years older than me. I and break I am- his up at two and he starts yelling at me like I'm six. <laughs> and I'm the younger of two and I can guarantee I've given my brother ample reasons to consider homicide. <laughs> you think, you think I'm bad in my videos? You <laughs> try living with me. Uh, I'll take yeah, you up on that. The younger siblings tend to be the brats of the family as I've learned. Wait, Norman. Norman, are you proposing to move in with me? Oh my. Yeah. Will the shippers. I want to see how it goes. Like, either you kill me or I kill you. <laughs> so let's see. Well, in any case, as we consider our cohabitational futures, uh, Fluttershy re- decides after some coaching from Applejack to go back and have it out with her brother, only to find he is basically destroying their retired parents' collections. Uh, this peeves me off. Language, sir. Do we need to get sweetie? (laughs) Oh yes, but still, this this really grinds my gear. Like you don't do this, you just don't do this. This, this, this. Like (laughs) Fletcher's dad collected all those clouds since work. Then this is just it. It really grinds my gears for this one. Like ah. These parents are letting their son live with them so that they can at least find a job for, you know, Zephyr Breeze or some situation like that. They're letting him stay in their home, and he's sitting there trying to redecorate everything. Be grateful, son. At least they're letting you stay there until you can get up on your feet. But no, you had to be an ungrateful twat. This is again where the the millennial commentary comes in. 
Uh, Norman, I, I understand what you mean that he's scared to try, but that's not a factor or made clear until the end. In this, at this point, all we know is that he's boisterous and that he welcomes himself into the home. Mm-hmm. Now, I've, I remember hearing an account from a, from a millennial who was living at home that one day his dad came up and said, when are you going to move out? And he looked up at him and he just said, why would I? I've got everything I need right here. And that is unfortunately a very real mindset work running through people. And this goes for the opposite for me because of how Asian family works in, well, Southeast Asia to be exact, because in Southeast Asia, the Kids will stay with the parents until, well, they're ready to fly off or get married and start their own family. Because the reasoning is to buy a house, to rent a house is expensive. And why would you waste money on those kind of things? Because essentially when you live with the parents, you have your own share. Like, okay, I'll pay for the sum of electric bills, water bills or whatever it is. So you're contributing to the family in that way. By doing so, you'll just help a bit with the house bills and whatnot. You still have free food from parents. You still have a roof over your head. And besides that, you support the family and you help parents do stuff. So that's how things work here. Once you're ready to move out, well, okay, you're moving out and parents can do whatever they want. From my point of view, it's a bit different. I do understand why, but to me, it's a bit different. Since I'm actually a millennial... Please. Okay, so I read an article about how tuition cost compared, like, from the 1970s, like, you know, when people were basically able to go to college for free, compared to today and why that is. Well, apparently, it has something to do with, like, the government like, state government not paying for tuition like used to. And apparently it's gotten expensive because colleges are trying to attract students with, like, certain aspects like luxury resort type of items in order to get a student to go to college. Whether you're going to college for the experience or going for it for the education... Needless to say, it's still pretty friggin' expensive. So as a millennial who is still having a hard time finding a job while also trying to mix college into the mix because I'm going there for the education, not for the experience, it can be a little hard to try and pay for tuition. Therefore, in order to maintain myself because I can't afford a dorm, I have to live at home. Now, after college, I still have to sort of live at home because I will have to pay for student loans. And being hard for me to find a job with no experience, yeah, I can see. But the difference here between a normal millennial who actually has common sense and somewhat of a humble criteria compared to Zephyr Breeze is that Zephyr Breeze is an ungrateful twat. (laughs) therefore i am grateful to have my parents put up with me despite me not having a job or at least that's my thoughts on this well said i didn't want to make it clear this is not meant to be a denouncement of millennials like i mentioned the pushback against bill maher a lot of people just saying there are economic and just uh opportunity limitations in place that keep people home but referencing again the millenn- the person I mentioned earlier who was just totally fine with where they are in life, rooming with their parents and sort of not re- rediscovering the high school luxury. That's, that's where the problems really set in. Everything that's meant to grow is going to experience a certain discontent with their situation. You know, be, be wanting to get out there and live on your own is a healthy sign of growth. When people abandon that, as Zephyr appears to be doing early on, that's the sign something's very wrong. Well, the term here I can see is that Zephyr's not ready to leave the nest yet. And oh, he's he's ready. He just doesn't want to admit it. Uh, uh, hmm. I'm not sure that 
if he's ready because he still has doubts about himself. About let's just say he has no self confidence and he quits when the going gets tough. His fallback is always on his parents because well his parents are supportive or very loving and very caring and. At this point, he's abusing that. Uh, but I'll tell you, Norman, you're never going to start something new without having a, a fear in the back of your mind. Being afraid does not make you unfit to try. Oh, true that. So Flutter, Fluttershy finally puts the idea out there that Zephyr needs to move out, and her parents don't disagree. And Zephyr shows his fragility as while he's trying to be hardcore about it, he's... He's got that trembling voice. <laughs> and he's gathering up his little lawn gnome bunnies. Why are there lawn gnome bunnies? <laughs> Why not? Why not indeed? But he's off and away. And for a time, yes, Fluttershy is the loving big sister where she's worried about him. I mean, everybody's worried when you, when their little brother or child launches or little sister. But she doesn't have to worry because Zephyr is moving in with her. And he can stay there on one condition. He has to get a job. And I do love the little nuzzle bump she gives him to lay down the law. Also, Zephyr has the line, you always were kind of bossy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> who who feels that this genuinely applies to Fluttershy? <laughs> that made me laugh at least. It's like... <laughs> It actually sort of makes sense in their family, but outside of that, yeah, no. No, no, no think about it. Like, how was she bossy before? I think he's only saying that as a defense mechanism. Like, oh yeah, you were actually kind of a bitch. The, the thing is, um, I bring up this theory because when you're by your own and with friends, your personality changes. You're kind of trying to put out that you're a very positive person, but... Once you're at home with families, all that goes out the window and your true nature comes out. Oh boy, is that true. Well, actually, that's not kind of true because my personality within my family is kind of within this realm. Well, you, you think about it because only our family will know our true personalities, like how, like how bossy we are or how shy we are or how polite or how impolite we are. Only they would know, and if we're out in public, we're not going to show our negative side unless that's our true personalities. So this is one of those cases where I'm going to say that either it's a joking manner or Fluttershy was really bossy way back when. <laughs> Only Iron Will would have pulled that out of her. I don't know if I would say we show our true selves with our family. We show a part of ourselves. Uh, the love song of HR Proof Rock, putting on the faces to meet those we go out to meet. Basically, we, we act different depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. Our true selves can manifest in different ways in my eyes. I will say this is a compliment to Fluttershy. It shows how comfortable she is with her family that she can be this assertive. It's something an introverted soul is usually much more expressive or open with close loved ones. And yes, even in expressing frustration. Now, as Safi mentioned, he has to get a job. So I, they give basically Applejack and Pinky had their, their little cameo at the beginning. So we, we don't get to see how they handle this, but we get three attempts with Mitt, uh, the other ponies. Who, who was your favorite? Uh, let's see. I, I, for me, I would say Twilight. Twilight, My you like it when you go? Pony is rarity in this case. So and I you... wish I had Zephyr's job. I mean, just dyeing the friggin' fabric, that's like the most simple job in the world. And if you get paid for it, that's actually pretty nice. Well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I think it's a pretty do or die situation. <laughs> I see no, what you did no, there. No, don't even. I know I love puns and all, and I love you, Silver, but no. But no, he has to get his friggin' creative intuition or whatever because Opal stuck her paw in the friggin' die. Well, well, my thing is, why do they keep leaving him? But, Norman, you like that Spike got Huck Finn. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes, yes. 
Okay, so for the kids in the room. Huckle, it became a Huckleberry, uh, no. Tom Sawyer story. That's how uh, it came out. Huck Finn. Huckleberry Hound is a Hanna-Barbera character. And I'm surprised you know either. <laughs> Youngin. <laughs> You're all a bunch of youngins. Yeah. At least I know Tom Sawyer. Or at least the story where he freaking gets the one guy to paint the fence for him. That was Spike's story. Yeah, I think that's mandatory in high school, right, to read. Well, yeah, you can talk Huck Finn with with Bill Maher next time you <laughs> learn about him. Yeah. Okay. But honestly, I like this because think about it. Spike is there to supervise him. Like you mentioned before, why do they leave him alone? Someone should take care of him and look at what he's doing. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, so someone's there, and somehow he managed to pawn it off to someone else. Uh, you gotta respect the hustle. Do the hustle. And still, what about yours? Who's your favorite? Please tell us this Rainbow Dash. Actually, yes, it is because with that, with the implied violence, <laughs> is delicious to imagine. Oh my gosh, I did love that part. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean. Rainbow's the most no-nonsense of them all. And I'm sure many a fan would like to imagine Soren offering a little extra lightning shock when if Zephyr tried hitting on Rainbow. <laughs> the Soren Dash shippers will, will be out in force. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. But basically, yes, I, I love the implied violence of seeing <laughs> Zephyr come back with an electrified mohawk. Yeah. He had a good day for him. And then he's like, it's too hard. She made me actually do work. But now it's time for Fluttershy to lay down the law, and he leaves in sadness. And to Rainbow's credit, for all the frustration she has with this guy, she keeps coming back and checking on them. I don't believe it's romantic love, but she cares about this family. Maybe Fluttershy is the first little sister she never had. If you think about it, they went to flight camp together and Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash kind of hit it off. I imagine or, it's like a case with like Gilda where Rainbow Dash got Fluttershy come out of her shell a bit for her. Maybe just a yeah, little. Something or something like that. We can spin marvelous theories. This is fanfic material mm-hmm. extraordinaire. But instead, Fluttershy is pulling a Lord Varus and listening to her little bird. <laughs> Yes, and oh no, it seems that Zephyr is not a happy camper. Not at all. He is... He turned into a castaway, minus the island. And yes, Fluttershy and Rainbow are right, he's not going to make it till noon. Now here's where finally the, the, the fear of failure rears, is made known. <laughs> and this is probably the best part. This is where you start to feel for Zephyr. Especially since... And this actually plays off what Big Macintosh said in uh, Brotherhood of Social. Her, his sister is a world-saving hero. Why? How do you even compete with that? How do you measure up to that? Mm-hmm. That's also true. I don't know about you guys. With personally, for me and my family, even though I'm, <laughs> even though my younger sister is not the world savior or something like that. She's already a hit in life by having her own family. And I'm still here not having a girlfriend and still single. So I'm just wondering what's wrong. Well, truth is nothing's wrong. It's just people, people advance in different paces. And so it's, and that's the hard part. I think part of the lesson with Zephyr is to not compare yourself to your siblings. You lead your own life. But I do love Sort of the resignation, I will literally do anything you want as long as it gets me out of here. <laughs> yeah, but the next line was pretty good too. <laughs> I forget yep. what the, I, I forget what the next line was. Uh, let me try and open the wiki. Uh, this is going to be great for editing. Let's just keep it rolling. Yee. Time, time is not always on our side. No, it isn't. So Zephyr returns to Fluttershy's home and he faces the ultimate test doing what he should have been doing at the start of the episode. And this song, they just sort of launched into it. What was your impressions on it? Sefi, you It first. was nice. Rainbow and Fluttershy had good harmony. And I 
sort of like this song. I don't really have any initial impression on it, other than I liked it. And Norman, what did you... I'd have to re-listen to it. (laughs) And for me, I wasn't expecting this, because I was more expecting a montage. You need a montage. Montage! Montage. Yeah, so I was more expecting a montage, but the whole um, song here was really good. Um, like Sefi said, the harmony between Rainbow and Fluttershy was good and it kind of wraps everything up in a nice little bow. And yeah, here's the line. Fluttershy says, okay, you know what you have to do, right? Beg for help, then quit when I get frustrated. Just kidding. <laughs> Total opposite of that. I got it. Which when I think about it, it's the same sort of joke that Starlight Glimmer will make in uh, <laughs> No Second Princes. Uh, yeah, she did that too. <laughs> wonder if we have the same writer on both episodes. Ah, yeah, that's... Uh, I'll do the research on that. Who was the writer for this episode? Uh, let's see. The writer for this one is Dave Rapp. And... Oh, Dave Rapp, no, written by no, Megan McCartney. No, Nick Costalone did uh, No Second Francis. All right. Well, we don't want to give a bad rap. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, uh, now, for my two cents, this song... It started out a little rough, because I swear when they got to some of the higher notes, the... The Rainbow and Fluttershy's voices didn't quite blend there. It's more, it's more when Zephyr starts emoting that he, that the song start, picks up speed. It's really for Zephyr. And the, the others are there just to sort of Harmonize. lead in. Yeah. I, I do like this because um, when I hear this song, the part where he goes, um, I can do it on my own. Yeah. That was pretty cool. With the yeah. Yeah. It's like, if I hear the song multiple times and like, okay, this guy's doing his own thing. But when you compile it with the video, ah, I see what you're doing there. Wait, did you say yeah? Yeah. Where's Joey play- Wheeler? Weren't you paying attention in yeah? More than anything, I think we're terribly overlooking Zephyr's natural talent to spontaneously grow manes. Look at that headpiece before and after. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And look at the color that's cutting out. This is not possible unless you physically grew hair on a mannequin head. You could just swap it around, so that's possible. No, I think Zephyr might have a future in hair uh, main club for ponies. <laughs> yeah. So, well, um, he did it. Now, off to finish his degree or whatever it is he's doing. Well, first, we have to have Rainbow having her mind broken. As even even Zephyr's parents say, Oh, we know you've been pining for him for so long. The look on Rainbow's face. My favorite part of the episode is like, Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And is she trying to um correct them? And Fletisha comes in and like, Oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Although, now that I think about it, I'm saying this having just seen 28 pranks later. Between Newbie Dash here, Flutter Brother, and 28 pranks later, this is the season where Rainbow's brain gets broken. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot. I'm amazed she's not a puddle. Uh, but still, it's one of those things where we like to see our favorite pony suffer. We mm. do. My- Fluttershy is my favorite pony. I don't want to see her suffer. What kind of sicko are you, man? Well, oh, uh, whatever. He's a Fluttershy hater. Get him. No, I love Fluttershy. Oh, oh, are you going to have problems? Oh no! I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna sit back here with my popcorn and watch as Norman dies by Zephyr's <laughs> gun. Wow, that's mean. But anyway, Zephyr comes. But anyway, Zephyr. Yes, Zephyr, com- Zephyr comes home and he's dressed in full graduation gown, which means that while these ponies were having lunch and t- and breaking Rainbow's brain. They did not attend his graduation ceremony. That's kind of messed up. Yeah, really. True, but still. <laughs> that or the old boy went to a costume shop and dressed up just to <laughs> emphasize the effect. Probably. Let's go with that. Yeah, I can live with that. Head cannon accepted. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's that, cool. Zephyr graduated and everybody's happy for him. Except that he still needs to move in with mom and dad for just a few days to get an actual job. Rainbow and Fluttershy's sort of giggling and shaking their heads shows that this isn't a relapse. It's just 
a very real fact of life. I think we end on an optimistic note, but when you say, when you said, Norman, that Zephyr is just a one shot, oh, I say the nay. I say that we should see Zephyr again. We should see how the old boy is doing. Not true. What, what, what I meant was that the show treats him as a one shot character. He'll probably come back around season, what, seven, eight, or probably nine. But as for now, if the fans are not clamoring for him, we won't get him. Well, I don't know if they're clamoring, although, I did see a brief surge of shipping with Rainbow Dash. Oh, yeah. I I remember that. Like, there's one comic that I'm trying to furiously look for now where uh, it's a really funny scene where Rainbow Dash is just frustrated with um, Zephyr's... Antics. Yeah, Zephyr's antics. And (laughs) suddenly, she's the one that has fallen. Like, oh, no, what have you done? Well, in either case, it was a, it was funny to watch the reactions. Like, huh? Even when she makes it very clear that she can't stand him, she still they we still ship him. Yes. Yeah, I I remember clearly, like after this episode airing, how how obsessed Keyframe was with this um ship. Oi, seriously, she is crazy for the ship. Actually, you were on that podcast. You would know, Silver. Well, I, I'm not on their podcast all the time. I'm just there for I know, one. I know, but you were on that week for this episode, Trader. I'm tr- Oops. Oh, <laughs> You're all trying to paint me in a bad light. I do that just fine on my own. Thank you very much. <laughs> Honestly, there's no exclusivity for any of you guys. But, uh, honestly, I don't, I can't recall Keyframe being very adamant about that ship i'd have to listen to the track again a lot's been going on since then yeah yeah let's see what's going on i'm kind of, I'm kind of on fumes here people Blah. but a good fluttershy episode is is food for the soul because i think this was a good episode we we've covered the synopses of events so let's move on to closing thoughts norman close your thoughts for me this is one of those Episodes where it had all of the things that makes a good episode. You had a really dislikable character who has his redemption arc. You have Fluttershy being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, assertive. Rainbow Dash's mind being blown. And we get to see parents, which is rare. And especially for Fluttershy, who has never been mentioned before or seen, this is Awesome. Now only we need Rainbow Dashes and probably Applejacks. Her parents are applied to be dead. I want a flashback. <laughs> My parents are dead! Then she became Batmare, the na 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 <laughs> Batmare. By the way, who's seen The Killing Joke? I have. That's another episode for another day. But anyway, um, okay. this one, I do like it a lot. The song was surprising, but it's interesting. It's one of Daniel Ingram's Good work. I won't say best. It, for me, I like it. And other than that, um, first appearance for Zephyr, really good. He portrays himself well. Now, we really need to see more of him and see how he's doing. It will be surprising if he appears in Manhattan or, yeah, Manhattan would be a good spot for him to be, well, one of those, uh, fashionista ponies. That'll be cool. He ends up working at Rarity's Boutique. Nah, Rarity knows her lesson. Pony, pony world out there, man. Now, Sapphire Heart Song Rogers Esquire the Third <laughs> Junior. What? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, God. For final it's turned into Bill and Ted for me, hasn't it? <laughs> Hang on. Your closing thoughts. My closing thoughts. This episode still scares me with the scary coincidental of the episode. I don't know how to put it in any other words. But Zephyr Breeze is a character I've learned to like a bit over time, like as episodes have shown, because he's a likable little twat, <laughs> even though I still think he's a twat. And I hope that I never end up in his situation where I have to stay at my p- parents, like, after college, Although I am sort of jealous of him for actually getting a job within a day because of his sister. 
I like this episode. It's okay. I am glad to see Fluttershy growing as a character. I mean, initially I didn't like Fluttershy that much because of her character. Like, you know, not really advancing. But season 5 and season 6 have proved have proven otherwise, and I appreciate that. Huzzah, <sighs> Palafarashai. You will all come to know the sweet. She's, she's fifth best pony in the main six at this point. No, we need to change that. Who, who's at the bottom rung? Rainbow Dash. <laughs> uh, ah, so the Pegasi are not flying high. <laughs> Ironically, since I am the Pegasus. That's it, she's just got wing envy. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, mm, Seth. Nah. We love nah, you and your my tiny My top three characters are Applejack, um, Rainbow, or Rarity, and Twilight in no particular order. I will Pinkie's now read them in no particular order. E. I think he's number four. Okay. Silver or Norman, somebody who's not me. I'm not you. I qualify. We've all given our closing thoughts, I believe. Uh, not you, man. Well, really, I don't, I'm not sure I could say more. It's my my second favorite Fluttershy episode, right after Hurricane Fluttershy. Uh, we get to see her being assertive, nurturing. It, this episode doesn't treat her as the binary coward or brute that so many other episodes fall into. They just show a dynamic personality who wants to support a loved one, but at the same time is frustrated by the loved one's hesitations. We get to meet her family. We get to meet her brother. It feels more natural and organic than the very awkward introduction of Shining Armor. The characters never really gelled for me because of that awkward introduction. I mean, it's funny. Twilight says he's the best brother ever. Then where's he been? (laughs) Zephyr Breeze, he's one of the worst brothers you could ask for at at this moment. I can see why he hasn't come up in conversation. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, um, all her friends know who he is. It's no surprise. Like, I think Zephyr visited Fluttershy once and yeah, didn't really <laughs> do, didn't really give a good impression on her friends. Yeah. I can see that. Probably not. Although Twilight's a more recent addition to Ponyville. So I don't really harsh that she didn't mention her brothers right away. You know, I'm still wondering how long it's been in showtime since this series started. Still holding to about a year and a half tops. Mm, I don't know. It's hard for me to pinpoint how many years. Pony timeline is just really confusing. It is. And speaking of confusing, we should talk about the next podcast. Oh, yeah. True that. And next week's review is going to be My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue number 28, written by Jeremy Whitley and art by Jay Foskett. So, yay! Uh, sorry. Oh, we're, we're going to have a fun discussion here. Uh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Alrighty, but in the meantime, guys, thank you for hearing our meandering thoughts on Bill Maher, Millennials. <laughs> Yes. Lawn, lawn gnome chipmunks and somewhere in there there was a My Little Pony episode but thank you guys for joining us we welcome to hear your thoughts in the comments and uh, get your own views on Flutter Brutter and we will see you next week for our Taka Comics in the meantime I am Silver Quill and I have been Norman Sanzo I'm Sapphire Heartsong and I need to do a history report and go back in time and we'll, we'll vex her about that endlessly <laughs> so we're saying adios See ya. Bye-bye. Come on, old man. We're going back in time. We're going back to the 80s, man. Now, talking about time, I can't believe we forget about this. We forget Link. No, we are going back in time. There will be lots of air guitars, and we are going to say bogus and excellent a lot. How could we I forget guess. Link? Because he's not very good at conversation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>